Welcome back to AM Northwest. It's part mystery, part history, and comes out just in time to mark America's birthday. The new movie, Something to Stand For, explores unknown stories of men and women from the American Revolution to the Civil Rights Movement, who risked everything to build the country we love, including one man who fought in every major conflict from World War I to Korea. After that, it was back to Europe, where he stormed the beaches of Normandy. <laughs> fought the Battle of the Bulge and distinguished himself at Anzio. <sighs> Through it all, no matter where the war raged, those letters from home always found him. Little lifelines that reminded him of why he was over there in the first place. We welcome Emmy Award-winning TV host and narrator, Mike Rowe. Good to see you again, Mike. Tell me about this, this, this movie. Hope. Good to see you. Tell me about this movie. It's, it's, it's well, like an extension of uh, the way I heard it, isn't it? It is. It is. The, the movie didn't start as a movie. It started uh, as the stories in my podcast. Uh, I wrote a few hundred of them in the style of Paul Harvey, mm -hmm. who you'll remember was famous for the rest of the story. Right. Um, that podcast turned into a book. That book turned into a TV series. And now we're going to do some films. And the first one is nine of the most patriotic stories I could find. Short mysteries, right, stitched together that give you a chance to learn something you didn't know about somebody that you do. Um, so all of it is held together through a trip to D.C. where I visit the statues and the, and the monuments and the memorials that were built in many cases to honor the people that we feature in the film. So not really a documentary, not really saving Private Ryan, <laughs> kind of something in between. Something in between. At the D.C. Memorial, you met a veteran, a 92-year-old veteran, who just happened to be there. Wow, oh, it's one of my favorite parts of the movie. You know, the, the movie is very carefully scripted and brought to life, right? But that moment right here, that's not in the script. I, I'm supposed to be doing something completely different, but I glanced over and I saw this old man, Andy Michael is his name, with half a dozen other old men. Their families are with them. It's one of those honor flights. Yeah. You know, the volunteers are there. Right. And I just went over to introduce myself, and he knew me from dirty jobs. And turns out he and my dad served <laughs> together wow. in Korea. Oh, my gosh. I mean, wow. it's un unbelievable. Yeah. And he's there in front of that wall of stars talking to me about how grateful he is for... The, all those men and the tears are coming down his face and I'm looking around hoping that we're rolling on it and and we are but I mean the moral of the story Helen is if you if you want to do a movie about gratitude you know you have to remain open to the possibility that something entirely unscripted is going to be more persuasive than anything you could hope to impart. Ab absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of your dad, I wanted to ask you how he's doing. I understand he had a heart attack around Christmas time. Is he doing he did. okay? Yeah. Christmas night he had a huge heart attack, but he's back. He's, you know, he's he's doing his exercises. He's He's walking around. He's... You know, he's just being a giant pain in the neck to everybody around him, but we love him, and he's incredible. And my mom, who's in that photo, has just finished her fourth book. I just wrote the foreword yesterday. <laughs> her first book was a bestseller. She's 80, yeah. so she's like, it's just incredible, these two. Well, both your parents were teachers. I feel like that's where you got this ability to tell really good stories and to be interested in stories mm. that reveal things. I mean, that's just my pop psychology on you if you want to go to therapy. Well, you know what? Why, why go to therapy, Helen, when I got you? Yeah. I'll tell you this. I don't... I, it was more for me about being curious. My dad and my mom always fostered a sense of curiosity in their kids. And I also had two wonderful grandparents who lived right next door. Wow. And, and they were also curious. So between my dad, who was a history teacher, and my pop, who was a skilled tradesman, I had a front row seat to, you know, to work ethic yeah. and to a healthy curiosity about where we come from.
Okay, now let's talk about your love life. Um, let's talk about Freddie and how <laughs> Freddie's doing. Because Freddie has been around forever. He must be doing really well. Freddie will be 11 years old. Can you That's believe my little it? buddy. I know. Yeah, he still occasionally will write a column called Fridays with Freddie uh -huh. that people seem to enjoy. But yeah, he's um, he he's protesting right now because I'm on the other side of the country. But uh, he'll be there when I get back, crankier than ever. Okay. One last thing. Um, do you ever sing to him? Because we know you have a background in uh, like in barbershop quartet, in opera. Mm. Oh dear! Look, how cute. look at you look taking how, a deep dive. Look how cute you are. The only one without that a mustache. That was a long time ago. Yeah. I know it. I know it, right? I was too young to grow one at that point. But uh, yeah, you know, singing is just a, a trade. You know, singing is another tool in the toolbox. It it got me into the opera, and that opened the doors to a lot of other places I didn't think I would ever go, including the sewer where I spent 20 years on dirty jobs. And now, yeah, books and movies. And, you know, it's it's been a wonderful life, as Frank Capra would put it. Yes. What does it mean to you to put together this kind of film, especially for well, 4th of July? Yeah, Helen, look, it's just, I mean, it's a privilege. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, it's, it's very personal because I get to go back to Fort McHenry, not far from where I grew up, the site of my first field trip um you know I, I get to talk to my mom and dad about the business of doing all of this but most importantly you know i i hear from viewers who have been with me for from the beginning you know there are eight million people on facebook and instagram yeah. who, who 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 made my foundation relevant who watch the shows i work on and who will hopefully come to the theater to see this but honestly the best answer is is this you can call it whatever you want. Something to stand for, dirty jobs. It's the same thing. For 25 years, I've been tapping the country on the shoulder and saying, hey, what about him? Yeah. What about her? Yeah, get, that's true. Get a load of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's what the movie is. Uh, by the way, what is your mom's latest book? What's the title of it? It's called, oh, it's called oh No, Not the Home. It's coming out in October, and it's a collection of the funniest stories you've ever read about life in a retirement community. Oh, I love that. It's I it's something it. else. You'll I should get her on your show. You guys yeah. should get along great. Uh, absolutely. We want to tell everyone something to stand for is in theaters beginning June twenty seventh. Micro, thank you so much. Anytime, Helen, I appreciate it. All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.